Hi, this is movie -er with Mark Wildfuhr, movie maven par excellence, and we're here to talk about films that did horribly at the box office, but they have some appeal, and we think you should take a look at them. Actually, they're not nearly as bad as their financial disaster would indicate. Mark, pick a movie and tell us what you liked about it, even though it didn't fare very well at the box office. Okay, my first choice is Man on the Moon, Milos Forman's biopic of comic provocateur Andy Kaufman. Kaufman's métier was always engaging the audience. It was trying to push the envelope as far as he could with the audience. Sometimes he pushed it too far. Jim Carrey gives an uncanny impersonation. It's almost freaky at times. His performance as Kaufman is so spot on. The movie shows a lot of the highlights of his career. His days at Taxi, which were tumultuous days. He hated doing the show. He won it out. He basically got himself pulled off the show. His alter ego, uh, Tony Clifton, who is this obnoxious lounge lizard. The whole movie's about pulling the rug out from under the audience, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, as far as their routines go, but I think the movie always works. I agree. I mean, I think it's a terrific movie, and uh, I love the way they had the, the cast from Taxi playing Absolutely. themselves. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, Milos Forman, who did a really good job with the people, versus Larry Flynn, another biopic, I thought uh, really delivered here, so I agree there. A movie of mine that I want to choose is uh, Hudson Hawk, 1991, a fantastic disaster. Bruce Willis was sort of at the height after Die Hard, could do anything he wanted, and uh, actually I found this very enjoyable. Uh, I remember uh, seeing this and thinking, I don't know if the public's going to go for it, but I liked it uh, throughout. It has sort of that... Um, comic sensibility of the Ocean's Eleven movies. Willis sort of took control of the film from uh, the director and uh, there are a lot of screenwriters involved but I, I think the movie's a lot of fun and um, I highly recommend it. So that's my choice. Do you have another one Mark? I do. Uh, my next movie is called All the Pretty Horses. It was Billy Bob Thornton's adaptation of a novel by Cormac McCarthy who specializes in modern-day westerns. He also wrote No Country for Old Men. Mm -hmm. Matt Damon is the star of the film. He and Henry Thomas play two young cowboys who are pretty naive about their ways of life. And after the property that Matt Damon lives at is sold to the oil barons, he and Thomas venture into Mexico to try to find work. What they do is break wild horses. And uh, as they're getting successful, uh, Matt Damon falls in love with the daughter of the rancher, who's none other than Penelope Cruz. And I think what this movie tells you is, you can go to Mexico all you want, meet Penelope Cruz, but it's not all going to work out for, for, for the best. The movie's a long journey that takes its time getting to where it goes, but when it gets there, you feel really rewarded. Uh, now, my choice for another overlooked movie is Looney Tunes Back in Action, 2004. And uh, this is a mix of live action and uh, animation that you see now in the hit Hop. And this movie was a total uh, box office disaster. It took a long time to finish. It was directed by Joe Dante. I've read stories about the making of the film and how unhappy Dante was. And um, he, he had a meeting with Warner Brothers and uh, they were talking about having Bugs Bunny saying, what's up, Doc? And the person at Warner Brothers said, why, why does Bugs Bunny have to say that? I never heard that before. So it tells you the level of frustration. When you don't get that and you're running a movie studio, you're involved in producing movies, right. that's not a good sign. Right. But I highly recommend it, whether you're a kid or you're older. I, I really enjoyed the film. And now, Mark, to you, your next pick? My next pick is The Border, made in 1982, directed by the great Tony Richardson, and starring Jack Nicholson in one of his most understated, unusual performances. Nicholson plays a border patrolman whose life is kind of a shambles. He lives in a trailer park. His wife, played by Valerie Perrine, is a floozy who spends all his money, and he has really nothing in life to hang his hat on. He gets involved in some illegal trading. Two of his cronies, played by Harvey Keitel and Harry Dean Stanton, are regularly participating in this corruption. But Nicholson has a conscience and he starts feeling bad about what he's doing. It's really a, an interesting character study about a man who does a small thing but it means so much to him. And it sort of reminds me in a way of Nicholson's role in About Schmidt 
where you had somebody looking for real meaning and purpose in his life. And I read in an interview once that Jack Nicholson put this very, very high on his list of his own personal favorite performances, and with good reason. He really gives a terrific performance, none of the usual mannerisms that he's famous for. It's very heartfelt and very emotional at the end. Well, uh, you're sticking on the serious stuff, and it <laughs> seems like my mind's in fourth grade here. So uh, the next choice I have is Speed Racer. And uh, this movie was a big financial disappointment. It cost a lot of money to make, and it's from the Warchowski brothers, or maybe they're the Warchowski brother and Warchowski sister at this point. I'm not quite sure. But anyway, of course, it's based on the Japanese animated uh, series that we all watched in the 1960s. And it is really perfectly cast. Emil Hirsch uh, plays Speed Racer. Uh, G uh, Christina Ricci is Trixie, his girlfriend and partner in these adventures, and John Goodman and Susan Sarandon play his parents. This movie really hit the target right on. Again, if, if you remember watching Speed Racer when you're a kid, you'll, you'll enjoy it. You'll appreciate what they did, and if not, it's a good introduction to the whole thing. And you have another one? I do. I'm going to get off the serious stuff now. All right. And really take a tough tack and try to defend Ishtar. Oh boy. <laughs> this is not easy. A movie about two fledgling, if you will, songwriters that try to make it New York City. They're played by Warren Beatty and Dustin Hoffman. It shows how the genesis of songwriting exists. And some of these jingles, which were written by Paul Williams, are very, very funny. The problem with the movie is, after a suicide attempt by Hoffman because they're just not making it, the movie goes over to Morocco and it really kind of channels the road movies of Crosby and Hope. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't have a problem with that. The problem is it's just not quite as funny. The level isn't consistently as funny as it should be, but there's still a lot of amusing things in the movie. We have a blind camel that's hilarious. We have uh, vultures that are picking, <laughs> picking at the carcass of, of Dustin Hoffman and Warren Beatty on the desert. And, uh, there's a lot to like in this movie. I think the big problem with this movie is it costs a ton of money and you don't see it on the screen. You know, it's one of those movies I think they reviewed because of the budget, not right. necessarily what was in it. Right. And um, speaking of which, we go from Ishtar to what has been called Fishtar, and that is Waterworld. And that is the uh, Kevin Costner's 1995, much written about you know, $120 million or whatever it was at the time, budgeted science fiction epic. And it's got a great villain performance by Dennis Hopper. But basically, the story is Costner is this gill man, and he's fighting this faction called the Smokers. And that's led by Hopper. And they, they go around in these um, vehicles on the water, and there's lots of action. In fact, there's a now uh, at uh, Universal Studios, there's a whole action uh, stunt show based on it, which is a lot shorter than the movie, so for some people they might rather <laughs> see the stunt show. But I, I thought this movie uh, worked, and it wasn't nearly as bad as the review. So uh, I'd say Waterworld. Check it out if you have it. You have another one. I do. My final film I want to talk about is one of the last huge musicals ever made. It's Hello, Dolly! from 1969. And... Yes, we all know Barbara Streisand was totally miscast in this film. She's way too young. Walter Matthau can't sing a lick. But if you put those things aside, it looks great. It was directed by Gene Kelly, and who knows more about choreography than Gene Kelly. Michael Kidd did the choreography. All the songs are intact from the original. And the story is interesting. It's fun. It's about a matchmaker who makes all these different matches for members of her family and extended family, and then finally, in the end, finds love herself. My last recommendation is 1941. That is Steven Spielberg's comic war epic uh, that cost a ton to make, and two studios got together, Columbia and Universal, to make the film. And of course, uh, at that point, Spielberg was coming off a bunch of blockbusters, so he pretty much had carte blanche. Essentially, it's about how people in Los Angeles react to when they think that there's going to be inv an invasion during uh, World War II. And there's all sorts of kooky characters in this. The cast is absolutely incredible. Dan Aykroyd, John Belushi, uh, Treat Williams, a fantastic supporting part by the great Eddie Deason, who I remember on this Ferris wheel, and there's a dummy in the scene. If you like strange characters, he's definitely there. There's some wonderful, talk about choreography, there's a 
dance hall USO show sequence. It's really wonderfully choreographed. John Williams did the fantastic score. And uh, 1941, I think, sort of has become kind of a cult film after years of sort of being badmouthed by people saying, oh, what a, what a bomb, what a disaster. That's our Bombs Away segment for collecting movie classics. I want to thank Mark Wildfuer for contributing. And this is Movie Earth.